Okay, so I've been upgrading my analog setup over the last couple months, actually probably closer to eight months or so, and I've been kind of going through a phase of going through each component and upgrading them. And I finally got down to that point of there was only one more upgrade that I felt was really needed, and that was the speakers. Uh, for a while now, I've been running the Dolly Oberon 5s uh, in my setup, and I gotta say, I've been quite happy with them. But they were also, they weren't as, let's just say, meeting the rest of the gear. Over time, everything, you know, basically before the speakers have kind of been upgraded to reference quality equipment. Now, I say reference quality with quotes because arguably they're on the lower end of the reference chain. However, the manufacturers did slap a reference badge on them so i do feel entitled enough to call the equipment reference even though it didn't cost me a house to buy i will tell you that i've been blown away with the upgrades over time um, but i always felt like the overall system has been being held back because the loudspeakers that will represent everything that's behind it just didn't meet the <laughs> the rest of the equipment. I don't know if that's making sense, but they were just being held back. All the other investment was being held back. Well, I went to my local audio store here in Raleigh, North Carolina. Uh, the name of the store is Audio Advice, in case you're local here. Uh, you can also shop with them online at audioadvice.com. And I gotta tell you, I really love Audio Vice. I've purchased all of my upgrades through them. I've even have a couple of my close friends that buy equipment from them, and I feel like their their recommendations are very fair. They get to know your taste. They get to know what you like, because really, sound is subjective. There's going to be people that like different things out of the equipment that they purchase. That's why we have such a variety, and that's what I love about Audio Vice is that they have a variety of hardware to choose from. Uh, they deal with analog, they deal with theaters, uh, they have you know pretty much every bit of equipment that you can imagine, uh, even high-end digital streamers. There's a lot of stuff that they have in that store. And you're always met with really friendly and courteous individuals. Now I've been dealing with a particular sales rep for quite some time. Um, I'm, not per, <laughs> I'm not intentionally promoting them, so I'll keep the name off uh, the video, but the gentleman I've been dealing with has known me for a little while now and knows my particular taste. So when I went to go talk about speakers, we really already had some choices narrowed down. I wasn't going in there blindly. He knew the type of music I listened to, the type of equipment I had at home, the type of experience I'm looking for, and I had a real tough choice. But the nice thing is, is when you're at Audio Advice, they give you an opportunity to actually hear the gear before you go home with it which is just awesome. I love being able to have a listening session, bring some records along with me and be able to hear analog sound. For an analog person, that's important to me. And they don't have you connected to some, you know, you know crappy turntable. Uh, like I've, I've gone to some Magnolia centers and they have some nice gear there, but the table they use to demo is kind of subpar and you really don't get to hear the sound and the clarity. And when you're spending a lot of money on speakers, you really want to hear clarity, depth, soundstage, etc. And they need a they need a system behind it. Well, Audio Vice has that. If you haven't noticed behind me, I I did walk away with a set of speakers. And I got to tell you, uh, they are the Kef Reference Three Meta speakers, and these are they're a high end audio marble they feature an advanced meta material absorption technology they just call it matte and it's really there to reduce those unwanted sounds like all the distortion and things of that right it's really there for just like this pure uncolored sound and they're equipped with the 12th generation uniq driver array which includes a one inch vented aluminum dome tweeter and um and that's right in the center 
of a five inch mid-range driver. So it's really cool technology there, I think. And it looks really cool if you can tell behind me. It's the speaker rate dead center uh, in, this, in the speaker stack in a set of three there. Uh, and this, the, the reason behind this, by the way, of marrying the two together and then being able to um, have it dead center is really there to ensure uh, the seamless and accurate sound dispersion coming from the speaker. Uh, it's accompanied by two 6.5 inch aluminum comb based drivers providing this deep, powerful bass. And we'll talk about that in a moment. The frequency range uh, is, I think, 33 hertz to 45 kilohertz and a sensitivity of 87.5 dB with the nominal independence of four ohms. I, I think I got all those specs remembered correctly. I haven't even had these speakers in my house for 24 hours, so I just kind of brain dumped all the specs before coming on here. Uh, and I gotta tell you, these speakers, they deliver an exceptional clarity, detail, dynamic range across all genre of, genres of music. When I was there in the audio advice, we played a whole bunch of different styles of music. We did play some records. It was also connected to a wireless streamer. And the guy just was like, pick them random songs. Like, you want to hear what jazz sounds like? You want to hear what a little bit of Latin sounds like? You want to hear what hip hop sounds like? Like, you're really just on demand to kind of get a sense of what the music actually sounded like. Connected to the gear, let's talk about the analog experience, right? Because there is a big difference from when you go and listen to hardware in a place that's designed for that hardware, meaning that they have a listener room, it's sound dampened, they got really expensive amplifiers connected to the speakers, they have a nice stack, like everything is just done in a way that if money was no object, it's the way you would do it at home. But money is an object and we all have our certain budgets and we all look to do things the best that we can to enjoy our investment right i have a wall of investment those records are my investment i want to make sure that those things sound the best that they can when i bring it home so yeah it can sound great in your store what is going to be when i connect it to my stereo system at home right how are my records going to sound they're the things that matter and I got to say with my setup, and my setup consists of a Riga P10 with a Hana Umami Blue cartridge. I have a Parasound JC3 Phono preamp, and that all goes to a Macintosh MA252 integrated amplifier. Um, and I got to tell you, it just brought those components to life. It really did. I didn't have a lot of opportunity to spend a whole bunch of albums, but I did get to go through maybe a half dozen or so, almost a dozen, maybe maybe almost 10. And I wanted to share some of those experiences with you. Uh, so first album that I got a chance to spin is an album that I really always enjoyed thoroughly on the dollies, but new life, right? And that album is the 1975. This is the uh, A Brief Inquiry into Online Relationships. And this is really an album of complex genres and production styles mixed into one. And the Kef speakers just handles it all with finesse. I mean, the, the clarity and the separation of instruments are just superb. The speakers revealing intricate details in tracks like Love It If You Made It, which is arguably one of my favorite 1975 songs ever. And also, It's Lion, I'm sorry, It's Not Lion If It's Not With You. I think the vocals here really came out crips. The dynamic range was impressive, bringing a concert-like experience into my listening space. I was really, really thrilled about just how amazing and immersive that album was. And it just got better. I popped on the MoFi Alan Parsons project. This is Eye in the Sky. I love this album organically without it being connected to just hi-fi gear anyway. But when you connect it to some really cool gear, oh my God, it's amazing. Listening to this album on this system was like a revelation. The Kev speakers reproduce lush layered production with incredible precision. The orchestra, elements and the 
Alan Parsons, you know, meticulous production just shine completely through. It's it's like a revelation on wax, especially when you think about tracks like Sirius and uh, Old and Wise. I mean, just the depth and the width of the soundstage just made it feel like the band was there in front of you performing. It's just a magical leap, a magical, you know, just journey forward, if you will, in sound. What what it really impresses me through so far, right, and I'm only two albums in, and it just got better, was just how good the equipment behind the speakers was, but just was never able to showcase itself because of the Dolly 5s. Not that they're bad speakers. The Oberon 5s are just, they're phenomenal speakers. They sound amazing. They, small footprint, serve well in a small uh, uh, a space like mine. This is a 12 by 12 room. Um, they have good dynamic range. I won't say great. I think always what's been missing from them is, is low end. But they sound good. They sound good. I think if you pair them with a sub, it would open that up and I and for a home theater for a digital listening experience that would work but with analog you really don't want to be attaching a sub at least I don't want to be sitting there playing around um, but there's just so much more in the music that just wasn't brought to life until the kefs came and it was like holy crap all the albums I have now I want to go back and like listen to every one because I got to tell you when I did my first upgrade and just even even just upgrading the amp, right? I came from an Audio Lab 6000, which you're probably like, yeah, that's really basic, going to the MA252. And when I went to the 252 and I still had my dollies, I was like, holy crap, this is what the dollies really sound like. It just really opened them up and I was excited. And I went back and started playing all my old albums again. Now I feel like the same thing. I'm like, holy crap, this sounds amazing. I want to go back and play all my albums again. All right, I kind of, I kind of, you know, got off track there. I apologize, but I just wanted to share some of that excitement with you. Hopefully, it's resonating. That I, yes, these speakers are really, really nice, um, especially when you're listening to something like Amos Lee. Amos Lee's self-titled album. This is the AP Press, um, and if you're not familiar, this is, you know, it's an acoustical masterpiece. It, it's, it's it, well, I, I would say it's an acoustic and vocal masterpiece, and the Kef speakers, man, just capture its warmth and all of the intimacy just perfectly. The songs like, you know, Arms of a Woman and Colors, the rich sound and just full bodiness with Lee's voice is coming through with this natural, lifelike presence was, you just, you just want to melt. You just, you fall in love with the music the acoustic guitar and the subtle you know backing instruments are just beautifully rendered and you can hear all of that layering perfectly and it just makes for this like deeply immersive listening experience i don't know how to explain it i hope you get an opportunity yourself to maybe hear these speakers and then maybe you understand what i'm saying i hope that you do but it is it is awakening and, you know, I have to, I had to, I had to, I had to, I had to, because honestly, this is probably one of my favorite albums since this came out. It has definitely become my top three demo album. When I have a friend or somebody comes over and you're like, show me this whole big deal about vinyl. Why are people getting into this? Don't it sound like crap? And I put this record on and people are just blown away. They're absolutely blown away. Um, and that is the UHQR pressing of Steely Dan's Asia. And you know, you already know this album sounds phenomenal. Even if you don't own this album, you know it sounds phenomenal because there hasn't been anything bad said about it. A lot of folks really believe that this is the definitive pressing of this album. I am amongst them. It's gorgeous. The only complaint is probably the price, but what you get, you, 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 you want the premium, You sometimes you have to pay for it, and you really hope it works out. It definitely works out, and then some with Asia. It's a phenomenal, phenomenal pressing, and it is, to me, the staple for testing high-end audio equipment. I bring it with me when I want to test out new things, and I got to tell you, it's always been impressive. Even folks that 
when I brought the album to the audio store and then when they heard it, they were like, oh my God, that sounds really good. Yes, the album sounds phenomenal. When you have it connected to those kefs, man, it just doesn't disappoint. Those complex jazz rock arrangements are just delivered with exceptional clarity and detail. Tracks like Peg and Deacon Blues just showcase the speaker's ability to handle those intricate rhythms and layered harmonies without losing any nuance like the overall sound is just smooth balanced and thoroughly engaging it's just just melts man it's just it just melts melts like like butter on warm toast man i'm just telling you and i i had the backup now this is the only other uhqr i listened to so i'm not gonna kill you with a whole bunch of really expensive records telling you how amazing they sound because that's a little bit jerkish but is this, the reason i'm showing you this one is because ultimately it's probably in my top 10 of of my most loved albums ever it is one of my favorite albums of all time um i just love every track on this album i think it was just put together with just such brilliance i'm putting together the 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 you know the track list on this one and that is bob marley's exodus one of my favorites absolutely hands down one of my favorite albums of all time and this particular pressing i would also argue is the definitive pressing of exodus i haven't heard a better one yet i'm not saying one doesn't exist if you have one that you think is sounds better Drop it in the comments below. I'll go seek it out if I can get myself a good copy of it. I'd love to do an A-B comparison. I, I would love for this album to sound better. If it can actually sound better, I don't know how it could. But if it can, I would want to know about it. Because I love this album. And I got to tell you, the reggae rhythms of Exodus are just brought to life. With a vibrant, punchy sound that's both rhythmic and soulful is exactly what you want reggae to sound like the speakers deliver marley's iconic voice with warmth and depth while the bass lines are just tight and well defined it's just it just goes together so so well songs like jammin and one love are just filled with energy and emotion you're listening to the music and you can almost feel marley dancing you know he was known to dance when he was recording even in the studio and you could just almost feel that energy really making it for a truly enjoyable listening session i gotta be honest with you it's not the last time i'm spinning exodus on that system within like it's gonna go on the turntable later again today for sure okay i really did want to get a variety of um, different types of music and I wanted to go for something that had a little bit more soul this time and really it really get lost in just some some just some just classic soul and I don't think there's any album out there that really captures that in totality than this next album this album again is one of my top demo albums it is another album I pull out virtually every single time somebody says hey they want to hear how this system sounds and what's great about this particular album is is that everybody's heard these songs so they know what they sound like until they hear it for the first time and you know what i mean by that and that is the mofi pressing of bill withers and this is his greatest hits and i don't care what you think about mofi i know a lot of people have strong opinions about it you could tell I have a bunch of mofis, and I gotta tell you, some of them suck. I'm not happy with some of them, but the ones that I keep, I like. And this one is one of my best albums in the entire collection. If you haven't heard this mofi pressing of Bill Withers' greatest hits, you're missing out. I'm telling you, I don't care if you hate mofi, just go borrow one from a friend that has one and put it on your turntable. It is amazing it is absolutely amazing on its own this sounded good before i upgraded my turntable before i upgraded my amp before i upgraded my speakers this was still my go-to album that i would use to showcase and it just got better and better as the equipment that it was being played on got better and better and better and this album this greatest hits is a greatest hits it's timeless hits and they're all given this like new life through the kef metas they are just the, the songs are just smooth soulful the the sound like if you if you think about ain't no sunshine or lean on me oh it's just rendered in 
impeccable clarity and warmth. Uh, the subtle details in Withers' voice and the accompanying instruments are just beautifully articulated, making this greatest hits album in, in the collection just a joy to listen to. I really, when I put that on, I felt like I heard it for the first time. I remember when I did hear out that album for the first time, I was almost shocked. I'm like, I think this is probably one of the best sounding albums I have in my collection, even better than some of the 150 whatever dollar UHQRs. I had to listen to it again. And I'm like, I think it is. And there's a couple of those albums in my collection that they're not terribly expensive. And they just, they just, they just kill. They just quality wise, sound wise, they're just top shelf. They're absolutely top shelf. Maybe one day I'll give you a video on my my demo uh, albums, which ones I prefer. Uh, I you know I think that's something I may look to do. All right, so I haven't had these speakers more than 24 hours before making this video, and I'm sure I'm going to have a lot more to say as I continue to get used to them, as I continue to learn, you know, hear things and pick things up. But I did want to get some hip hop in. And I only got a chance to listen to one so far because it's been late and it's been early. Um, and I didn't want to kill my wife. Like I didn't want my wife coming in. It's like two o'clock in the morning. What are you doing? Right? And she needs to sleep. And uh, the bass can really, really kill things here. And that is the Bone Thugs in Harmony. This is the E1999 Eternal. Uh, this is the VMP Press, which honestly, they did a fantastic job on that. Despite what you will or say what you will about VMP, you know on this channel, I like VMP. Most of their stuff sounds phenomenal. They nailed this one, guys. They really, honest to God, they nailed it. And these speakers really excel with those, you know, complex, fast-paced rap harmonies and the beats on this album. Uh, the speakers just handle all of that bass-heavy production with just ease. And it delivers these deep, punchy lows while maintaining clarity in the mid-range and the highs. It never gets muddy. Everything is just perfectly separated, perfectly complex, but you can, if you listen for something, you can hear it throughout, which is just awesome. Uh, tracks like The Crossroads and First of the Month just sound immersive. They're powerful. Every detail of the production just coming through in clarity. It is really a treat to be able to put that on. I will tell you that these speakers are going to take some time to get used to because I did have a moment when my wife was up and I cranked them and I went arguably higher than I probably should. You would never want to listen to the level that I cranked them to in this small room, especially without hearing protection. And it vibrated things so bad that not only did the needle jump, which was a that was a learning mistake, but also like my computer was in sleep mode that woke up, like things were like waking up because of the vibrations in a room. <laughs> so you can imagine how much power these things pack without an added sub and connected to, which is arguably Macintosh's lower end of their amplifier line. You can't imagine what these things sounded like with big mono blocks. Insane, 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 insane. All right. Are they worth it? Does it, would, you know, you could tell that I'm ecstatic. So, yeah, I mean, I think you got your answers. If I can summarize it, you know, these Kef Reference 3 Meta speakers paired with this high-end vinyl setup just create an exceptional audio experience. Whether it's the intricate production of the Alan Parsons Project or the soulful melodies of the Bill Withers album I just shared with you, these speakers deliver a level of detail, clarity, and sound, just the experience that's just truly impressive. I'm absolutely, absolutely enjoying going back and re-listening to my entire catalog. In fact, the moment this video is done, I'm gonna go make a cup of coffee, sit down, and have a nice listening session. And I hope that you join me by putting on some of your favorite albums, and I'll see you on the next video.